The first film in Denis Villeneuve's two-part adaptation of the beloved science fiction novel Dune is approaching. In anticipation of its release, I've been exploring the many complex characters that make up this epic story and what we can expect to see from them in this new adaptation. However, there is one character whose casting has yet to be officially revealed, leaving quite a mystery for how the story will unfold. This mystery surrounds the antagonist, Fade Ratha of House Harkonnen. In this video, I'd like to delve into his character and his place in Frank Herbert's story, as well as some speculation about what Denis Villeneuve has in store for Fade in this new adaptation. If you haven't seen my character videos of Baron Vladimir Harkonnen and Beast Raban, I'd encourage you to check that out also to get a more complete look at the history of this ruthlessly ambitious house. While overall the Baron is the main villain of Dune, he surrounds himself with quite an evil entourage. We learn a lot about the Baron by the company he keeps, though to him everyone in his inner circle are little more than tools to be used in his plan for galactic domination. His young nephew, Fade Ratha, is a main component of his scheme. When the story of Dune begins, there is quite an interesting and revealing interchange between the Baron, his twisted mentat Piter, and his nephew. The Baron is grooming Fade to be his heir, and he exhibits quite a bit of trust in his young nephew by having him present while discussing how exactly they intend to ruin their long-hated enemy, House Atreides. Their plan will ensure that their own house comes into a position of greater power and influence within the Empire. It begins on the planet Arrakis, Dune, home of the precious resource, Spice. They have set the biggest trap in all history. As the noble house Atreides makes their way to take over the spice harvesting on this unique desert planet, Powerful forces plot against them to fail, and for the Harkonnens to be seated on Arrakis once more. The Baron's plans hinge on a secret and uneasy alliance with the Padishah Emperor of House Carino, who has grown jealous and increasingly nervous of Duke Leto Atreides' growing popularity and military strength. The Emperor allies with their Harkonnen enemies to see to it that Duke Leto is no longer a threat to his position. However, Harkonnen ambition knows no bounds, and though seeing the Atreides fall and their bloodline ended is a top priority for the Baron, that is not the end result of his plan. The Baron has his eye on a much bigger prize, the Empire itself. With his nephew Fade as his chosen heir, he hopes to force a marriage alliance between Fade Ratha and the Emperor's daughter, Princess Erlen and from behind the scenes, rule the first Harkonnen Empire. Fade is still quite young, however, at about 16 years of age when the story of Dune begins, and so he has a lot to learn to be the tool that the Baron requires. The Baron has two nephews, the younger Fade Ratha, and the much older Glasu, charmingly nicknamed Beast. The Baron's favor towards Fade is obvious. He is handsome and charismatic, and more importantly, balances his Harkonnen ambition and killer instinct with intelligence and subtlety, unlike his older brother's mindless brutality. The Baron's schemes are certainly central to the plot, but there are other forces at work and parties who are heavily invested in what happens on Arrakis. The powerful female institution known as the Bene Gesserit have their own plans for the universe, and as such, have been manipulating the bloodlines of the elite for centuries to achieve their goals. They have their own plans for the Harkonnen heir, Fade Ratha. It is their secret goal to create a super being with all of the Bene Gesserit's powerful abilities and more, who could then enact their own vision for humanity. All of their work has come to this point in history. The bloodlines of House Harkonnen and House Atreides must unite to create their chosen one. Fade Ratha and an Atreides daughter were intended to be the parents of this super being. However, not everything went as planned. The Lady Jessica, member of the Bene Gesserit Order and sole companion to Duke Leto Atreides, gave him a son, an heir to carry on his legacy. The Bene Gesserit are not happy with this state of affairs, as a continuation of the deadly feud between House Harkonnen and House Atreides could lead to both essential bloodlines being wiped out 
and all their work to produce their manufactured messiah would be undone. Like our main character, Paul Atreides, Phaedratha is also at the mercy of other people's plans for him. At certain points in the story, we see how certain events that these two face are somewhat mirrored, and we learn more and more how different they are from each other in the decisions they make. Paul and Fade have several similarities. They are both intelligent and trained in combat. They attempt to forge their own path and achieve their own goals apart from what's expected of them. They are products of the houses they were brought up in and the people that are closest to them. Paul exhibits the noble and honorable qualities of his father and that of his aides and teachers. That is about the extent of their commonalities. One wonders how Fade would have turned out with a different upbringing. However, as it is, Fade is a product of the Harkonnen Code of Ethics, meaning he has none, only thinking of himself. He is selfish, conceited, without honor or any sense of loyalty and morality. He is a formidable warrior, and just as cunning and ambitious as his uncle, if not more so. I'm particularly interested in seeing how this character will be portrayed in this new adaptation. The role was most famously first portrayed by Sting in David Lynch's 1984 film, and by Matt Kieslar in the Sci-Fi Channel's original miniseries in the year 2000. Denis Villeneuve's Dune is mere months away, however, there's been no announcement of who is set to play the murderous narcissist Fade Rotha. There are several theories as to why there has been no announcement of his casting yet. One theory is that they are keeping his casting a surprise perhaps until a trailer comes out, or maybe in a final trailer right before the film's premiere. The casting of Sting was such a surprise and polarizing choice at the time, and certainly has made this role particularly famous, so maybe they are looking to emulate that in some way as a marketing strategy. Another theory was that his role was completely taken out of the adaptation, and any parts that featured Fade would be given to his brother Beast Raban as played by Dave Bautista instead. This line of reasoning was brought up since there are quite a few antagonists in the story already, so it was theorized that replacing Fade's part with Beast would give his character more to do to really flesh him out as a villain in both films of this adaptation. However, considering how important Fade Ratha is in the schemes of the powerful, that would cause too many continuity errors in my opinion. Another theory is that Fade is simply not in the first film of this new adaptation, but is instead teased, or only mentioned in conversation, and is intended to be featured heavily in the second film of Denis Villeneuve's adaptation. This is a theory I tend to think is the most plausible. Fade Rotha doesn't have that big of a role in the first half of the book, so I think there is something to be said for holding back this character until the second film not only to flesh out the other villains in this story a bit more in the opening installment, but to also provide more weight and significance to the final film. Splitting up singular books across multiple movies can be tricky. The ultimate goal should be that both films are complete within themselves, with a definitive beginning, middle, and end. For the first part, that will certainly be much easier. It has a very strong introduction, and the book contains a natural break to serve as a conclusion of sorts. Cinematographer Greg Frazier has recently commented about this and said that it's a fully standalone epic, which is definitely reassuring. However, what about the second part of this adaptation, and what could this mean for Fade Ratha? Consolidating Fade's contribution to this story into one film and using the book's gladiatorial scene on the Harkonnen homeworld, which features this character heavily, could serve as an epic introduction to Fade Ratha and perhaps could give that movie a much stronger opening sequence. This would also allow for more character development for him and Paul, perhaps providing an even more satisfying conclusion in this two-part adaptation. I wish I knew for sure how this will play out, but it looks like we'll have to wait and see what Denis Villeneuve has in store for Fade's character. There is a rumor that he could be portrayed by Ty Sheridan from Ready Player One and the X-Men franchise. His name appeared on the IMDb website very briefly, and there has been nothing official confirming his casting. It's hard to say exactly what happened there, but I can only go by what has been confirmed. I like Ty Sheridan, though I admit he isn't my first choice to play this character, However, he does have the Harkonnen genetic marker of the full pouting lips and dark hair, and is close in age to Timothy Chalamet who is playing Paul Atreides. 
so on paper he seems to be a good fit for Fadrotha. I would love to know in the comments what you think about this Ty Sheridan fluke on IMDb, and if there could be something to this. My dream casting would be Cameron Monaghan of Gotham and Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. He plays the villain so well, but also brings an equal measure of charm and villainy, which Fade Ratha is known for. And this is kind of a side point that I admit would be a slight departure from the book, but I would like it if his hair was kept red, as it was for the character in David Lynch's film. I think it would be an interesting visual marker to distinguish himself from Timothy Chalamet's Paul Atreides. It would also be kind of a nice little nod to Sting's turn at this memorable character. That's just my opinion though. I would love to hear your ideal casting for Fade in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did and be sure to subscribe for more Dune and other sci-fi and fantasy content. And let me know your thoughts, theories, and speculation about Denis Villeneuve's plans for Fade Ratha in this two-part adaptation. Thank you all so much for your support, and as always, have a very nerdy day.